about, uh, well, the narrator is named Anna. She's 25, and she's married to a man named Will, who has a five-year-old daughter, Sadie, from a previous marriage. Um, they live in a duplex in Utica, New York, and um, the family that lives upstairs has a 15-year-old daughter named Jenny. Will is hanging up the phone and pouring Cheerios into a bowl for Sadie at the same time when I walk into the kitchen. Sadie is sitting at the kitchen table in her pajamas with crayons and a coloring book. She refuses to get dressed before she eats. I go to the fridge and get out the milk to help Will with Sadie's breakfast, but Sadie sees me and says, don't. I put the milk on the counter and sit across from her. Sometimes I feel like she can read my mind. How'd you sleep, I say to either one of them. Fine, Will says. Sadie keeps coloring. They are both so busy, I feel like I could walk out right now and no one would notice. Will is already dressed in a gray suit, and Sadie is coloring hard, making dark, waxy lines over and through the black shapes on the page. I grab the newspaper that is on Will's chair and try to read the comics. Sometimes I'll find one that is funny and show it to Sadie, and she'll laugh, or maybe she's just being polite, though I'm, I'm still not sure if five-year-olds do things just to be polite. I wouldn't have thought so before, but there have been times when I've held up the paper to show Sadie a family circus or Marmaduke, and she has furrowed her brow at me and blinked a few times before stretching her mouth into a laugh. Maybe she was just looking at the picture, but I always felt like she was studying me. None of the comics are worth showing Sadie today, so I put the paper back down on the table. Just then I see Jenny walk by the kitchen window. Her hair is down and blowing around her shoulders. It seems too early for her to be leaving for school, though I suppose high school starts earlier than kindergarten. Will is looking down when she walks past and so I am the only one who notices her. She pauses by our window long enough to pull a cigarette from her pocket, but I don't see her light up. She's like an extra in a movie, and she disappears from the window frame, which is my little screen. Jenny, I say. Will looks up, but not out the window. He turns around to face me. Jenny, he asks. She just walked by. To school, I'm sure. He rolls his eyes. She had a C-I-G-A-R, did she? Will cuts me off. I don't want her doing that shit around Sadie. You said a bad word, Sadie shouts. <laughs> Will puts the cereal down in front of her and kisses her on the head. I'm a terrible daddy, huh, he says. Sadie shakes her head. No, but you have to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sadie, he says, and sits down at the head of the table. He has poured himself a bowl of Cheerios, too, but I still don't have any food in front of me. And to Anna, Sadie continues. Will turns to face me. I'm sorry, Anna. He leans over and kisses me on the mouth, and I taste milk in the morning and last night's sleep on his breath. No harm done, I say. Then I get up and pull a box of frozen waffles from the freezer. Why do people say bad words, Sadie asks. As, as Will, as I pop my waffles into the toaster and push down the lever. Well, sometimes someone gets really angry, and when you're really angry, sometimes it's hard to think. So a word just runs out of your mouth, like, like a rabbit, Sadie says. Her cereal is getting soggy, but she's looking up at Will with her mouth open. She loves his explanations for unexplainable things. A rabbit? He pauses and thinks a moment. Well, yeah, okay, like a mean rabbit that runs out. And <laughs> if you weren't mad and were really paying attention, you might have stopped it, but because you're so angry, that rabbit escapes and nips whoever is listening to you on the ear. <laughs> then you have to say you're sorry and try never to swear again, because each time you swear, the rabbit gets bigger and bigger, and pretty soon you can't put it back in. It's just out there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the toaster dings, and I reach up to pull out the waffles. My hand grazes the top of the machine. I feel a scalding pain. Motherfucker, I yell. <laughs> Sadie gasps behind me. I drop the waffle on the floor and move over to the sink. I push on the cold water and stick my hand under it. Will clears his throat. <clears throat> Anna, do you have something to say? <laughs> that fucking hurt, I say. <laughs> I can, out of the water and put it near my mouth. I lick the skin like that will help. My tongue is too warm. My skin tastes metallic. Say you're sorry, Sadie almost shouts. I burn myself, I say. But the rabbit is getting bigger. <laughs> Sadie slams her fist on the table, knocking her cereal spoon out of her bowl. Milk pools on the table, and a lone Cheerio bathes in it. Fuck the rabbit, I mutter. But my hand is still in my mouth, and I don't think either of them hears me. Will is looking at me, waiting. I turn back around and run my hand under the cold water again. It never gets cold enough. Finish your breakfast, Will says to Sadie, and she does. Thank you.